Hey guys, welcome back to the end of the video. Today I want to show y'all the newest rig, the Pioneer 5 Seater 1000. I'm sure you've seen a few videos on the features before, but we're just going to go through them very quickly. Up front, we have the LED high beam and low beam, as well as the color panels all the way around and these nice aluminum wheels. These are some of the things that come on the deluxe model in particular. And since this is a three-seater, you get essentially a bench seat, but you get nice bolstering on the sides. And that does keep you in place, so you're not sliding all the way around, which is something that I did have some issues with on other models. So you can definitely sit two adults on here. This you could sit an adult, but honestly, it would be a very tight squeeze with three adults, but you can do it in a pinch. Now in the back, I'm not gonna pull up the seats to show you all that, I'm sure you've seen it, but if you do, you simply open this door, you're gonna lift this seat up, and then you have two extra seats in the back, or as I'm doing right now, you can use it as a bed. Some of the really nice things is that we do have this nice sun top over here, so it'll keep rain off of you or all the sun off of you. And it actually does quite a good job keeping everything shaded. We also have a plexiglass window. And honestly, it's okay. Uh, it's where you can actually vent it. So if you undo this and then push it out, you can you can have wind coming into your face a little bit during these hotter summer months. But this is a little loose right here. So on the trails when you're going down kind of gravel roads and everything it's going to start shaking a little bit and it's going to get a little annoying with all that noise but something that you may just have to live with or just get a full-on windshield without this break in the middle well now we've covered everything it's time to get on the trails a little bit take this thing for a drive and explain what it's like to drive now the first thing you're going to notice is how quiet this engine is when i started up I mean, really, you can have a normal conversation in here. It is just incredible compared to the old Yamaha that we had. We're gonna go ahead and put it into high. We are still in turf mode. There's no reason to have it locked in four-wheel drive. And one thing I've noticed is that whenever you really start driving, especially at lower speeds, it can be a little jerky, especially if you let off. It almost feels like a clutch in a manual car with someone that's not very experienced is the best way to describe it. But you can get used to it. It's not too bad. And then you can hear right there, it just shifted down to second. And right now it's all in automatic. I'm not doing anything except using a gas pedal. And one thing that absolutely amazes me is the turning radius on this thing. Even compared to my ATV, which had a much smaller wheelbase, this thing turns basically on a dime. We have to make essentially a 90 degree corner right here. But we're gonna do so in high gear, turf mode only. We'll swing out just a little bit, cut the wheel back in, and look at that. Not a problem whatsoever. It turns right in, and you don't have to worry about a thing. The ride quality in the Honda is really, really good. You know, something I really enjoyed about the Yamaha is that the ride was not too bad. Going into these bumps and everything else, yes, you're going to slide around a little bit, but honestly, it could be much worse. Overall, I find it very smooth, very relaxing, and for someone that doesn't have the best of backs, as long as they go through, slow through this type of terrain with a lot of hills and bumps and everything else, they're gonna be just fine. Now this is the largest hill I have, and it is a pretty aggressive hill climb. This is easily well over a 20 degree slope, and I wanna take the Honda, and we're gonna go ahead and put in low gear, because that's what I do with the Yamaha and everything, and I'm kind of comparing it against that, but I'm standing only about 20 feet away, and I'm way higher than the roof already. It's going to be very hard to give you an idea on the slope of this thing but it is very steep i'm going to stay in high mode for this i usually use low for this but i want to see how it does in high and i'm going to go ahead and go from turf to two-wheel drive which will lock the back wheels just because it is so steep and i don't have, want to worry about one wheel slipping and the other wheel not catching it or anything That was pretty good considering i was in high gear and only two wheel drive it got me up the hill just fine it didn't slip plenty of power now i'm sure if i were to use low gear i have a lot more power going up that hill but not a problem whatsoever we're at the beginning of that steep hill once again except for going down i'm going to put the transmission into low keep it in two wheel drive and i'm just going to give it enough gas to get started down the hill and i'm going to see how well it can 
crawl down this hill with the engine braking system. This is something that CVT struggle with a little bit. Right now it's catching me really well actually. I'm only crawling about three miles an hour going down this hill. Sped up a little bit to four, but I'm still in plenty of control, not an issue. Just like that, I'm almost down at the bottom. According to the speedometer, I only went four miles an hour down that hill. Now, of course, we're gonna have passengers in here, a trailer, something like that. It's gonna be a little bit faster, but they did a really, really good job catching me and slowing me down going through that hill and not having to brake. Something all of y'all have been wanting to see. We're gonna do a little bit of a top speed run, not completely full out. We're gonna see where this thing rides comfortably at high speeds. It, this thing did absolutely fantastic it got to 60 really with no problem i was between half of the throttle and three quarters of the throttle i promise you my foot was never completely against the board one time this thing absolutely has plenty of power to get up and go and i promise you if it didn't have a limiter on it it could probably do 70 and above with the limiter i know people have tested it and it's about 67 68 miles an hour with the limiter on it I like to have a little bit of speed, that way I don't have to worry about cars just flying over the hills and hitting me. At least if I'm doing, you know, 40, 45 or something on this main road, I don't have to worry about getting hit from behind or they should be able to see me. You okay? Now, if I remember correctly, this is really the only mud we have in the area. It's pretty well shaded, so it's been really difficult to dry out, so it's super soft. I'm gonna go two-wheel drive, locked, of course, and just go through here, and I think it's pretty deep on this side, so I'll try to go on this side and see how we do. Another impromptu test. This is a really steep embankment right here. And whenever I'm launching the boat, I launch it usually in this area and then I climb up the top of this ridge and go through it. My family just came up and we had four people in the Pioneer. We were able to do 55, 58 going through these hills down this road. We went down to that same little mud bog earlier and didn't have an issue with that. There's plenty of power still left on tap for this thing. It's just absolutely incredible. Now I hope y'all enjoyed this little overview and review of the do side by side. I'm looking forward to using it for years to come. And if you did, please make sure to share, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.